You found yourselves at the end of dreadful combat after coming face to face with a creature of legend and the thing of nightmares, Ignea, the Red Dragon. Put in a life or death battle against Cudgel's former subordinate, Gregorius, you managed to dispatch him in gory fashion, and uh, also an array of elementals using both might and cunning. Faced with your efforts, Igni instructs you to pander to the city for their surrender, and then flies off into the distance where she claims there's a troop of 200 iron-clad worshippers of Tachesis ready to crack down on everyone's skull and gold. Gregoris dis Gregoris's disfigured remains had little of interest to offer. You discover a book with a section that stands out. Interestingly, part of this is chronicling old stories and parables of Kren. Becklin was shaken by her cowardice and vowed to never stand aside while others fought ever again. Our adventurers, Cudgel and Becklin, all five decide the two old friends should seek out the army to actually prove there are 200 soldiers. The party then heads back to town with an inconspicuous stranger who is also captured with Macklin and Cudgel by the name of Theodore. You head back to town, and as you're doing so, you notice a little cave. You inevitably decide that Faraday should investigate, just to uh, remain as safely as possible. The three of you then discuss arrangements for the city and fortification plans. There were many angles to cover, and no one plan seemed to be perfect with so much on the line a ticking clock, dire threats, and so little known. But the seeds of many considerations were sown. These will be exceedingly important later on. Deciding to describe the situation to Mayor Raven, you head to the Brass Crab. The mayor had been thinking of her own arrangements and explains that she'll deliver the town to the Dragon Army. Upon protest, Mayor Raven then orders guards sent for you to prevent further meddling. That's when you hear a loud, resonating thud as the door to the Brass Crab is violently kicked open. You look with anticipation and expect to see a handful of eager guards, but are shocked to see the once inconspicuous bystander, Theodore. He carries the sparkling blue head of the fallen Draconic Mage, and lugged over his shoulder is the form of the silver Draconic Warrior who had been previously dispatched. He was the one that was wreaking havoc on the city prior, all by his lonesome. These two seemed interesting. They defied the pattern he'd seen previously upon death, and something treacherous seems to be happening. You're not really sure what. Typically, when the Draconians are murdered, they explode with acid. Or maybe there's a stone-inducing mist. There could be other forms of causality. But from what you've seen, it's upon death when this occurs. These two felt unusual. It was odd enough they didn't explode or nothing bad happened. They seemed more powerful, confident, lax, as if they know something you do not if there's some sort of inside joke and you're not in it. You recall the Silver Draconian kind of laughing at you when you had him snared. Didn't seem concerned. Didn't seem bothered. You had carried the head of the Blue Dragon for a while. It's no longer in your hands. It's in the hands of Theodore. It seemed like a, a war trophy. It was the evidence you'd been seeking all this time to prove to the city, to Becklin, to everyone who would listen, that there was danger. And now you see this inconspicuous man holding that head. The draconic warrior draped over his shoulder is exceedingly heavy. It seems odd that he's even able to accomplish this feat and seems to do so without any concern. It's easy for him. As if that large amount of muscle was just made of air. There were a few patrons in the bar, but of course this is a startling scene and times are tense. So you have a couple of bar patrons. Untamed Siren was hanging out. 
bartender, waitress, and they've all kind of run to the back in fear of this moment, but not Mayor Rape, who then confidently walks down the stairs. And that brings us to our session tonight. I would like for everyone to open up Discord. And again, stakes are low, but it's kind of fun. Uh, is everyone able to see Discord? Yep. 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 Okay. What what unfolds before you is a spectacle where it almost feels like the phoenix rising from the flame transformation. Dude, fucking holding the dragon. <laughs> it's always in the eyes, man. Oh, shit. I feel like this is very bad for us. No, man. Cool armor. That is cool armor. Very cool. Oh shit. I, can, I really thought it was gonna be Lord It's a badass helmet. Fuck! <laughs> okay. That brings us to tonight. <laughs> oh you guys in the map. shit. That was fantastic, dude. Oh, oh. I mean, the beginning, well, you can tell that I got. <laughs> I started at a place and I finished it. It was good shit. It was fantastic. Very good job. Oh, shit. So we're in the room with this fucking guy? Yes. Oh. Now, if you'll recall, you were kind of standing towards the top of the bar. So, I would say anywhere around the staircase, is they okay? Uh, there were civilians, pedestrians, um, if you want me to kind of figure out where some of them are. So, if you do that. Um, but for all intents and purposes, we can walk them back for now. And it's you and this guy. Yeah. yeah, I kind of moves over by this chair. He was in pursuit of Mayor Raven. He sees the three of you at the back. Ace leaders. Where did you place your tokens on the map? And everyone to the Well, you said to put our people wherever? Uh, at the bottom or the top of the staircase, whatever works for you. Okay. Were we, like, upstairs when this occurred? You were. So okay. she was kind of upstairs, sitting by herself, when you approached her. She was kind of at a, a more lonesome spot. She was the mayor. You walked on on. She wouldn't be by herself. Um, so you're more than welcome to go where Arlen is, kind of over here. But you're certainly rather close and could engage. It's not a huge bar. He would be 20 feet from the bottom of the stairs. And the staircase itself would be another 
10 to 15. Uh, but you're welcome to place yourself top of the stairs or the bottom of the stairs. Whatever works for you. Shall be there. How how far is the drop? Uh, about oh, from the from this area, we're gonna say in fifteen feet. Okay. Question: Are we still like worn out from the fight with the dragon? I would say that no. I would say definitely not. I would say y'all. With some time, when you went over these plans, you kind of rested up. But uh, even just walking back wasn't that arduous. Um, and so, yes, you're fully rested. Maxed on, fully rested. Heard that. Gonna... Yeah. yeah, you were capable of doing anything on your character. Okay. Okay. Did everyone roll initiative? It looks like I've got some. Nope. Not at all. There's that. Come on, woman. Fine, right, I'll do it on the thing. Did you roll top? No, I thought I had a button, but. That's okay. I just wanted. I didn't mean to rush you. I just wanted to make certain because. I did now. Mm. This sounds a little bit like Lord of the Rings. Is it too loud? I like it. No, it's yeah. It sounds like I like it. I get Bloodborne like, vibes. <laughs> I was gonna say it sounds a lot like uh, when they show uh, uh, like the Witch King. Uh, Witch King, the Witch, yeah, the, basically the Witch King's theme, theme in uh, uh, in uh, Lord of the Rings. That it sounded a little bit like that there at the end. Uh, I have a fourteen just for transparency. I don't have him linked or mapped or anything. It's just a token. That's okay. I've got a dice roller and link email. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, so, Calixto, you're up first. I will remind you, um, you do have haste armor. Aethelflaed, you can enlarge yourself. Tarlin, you have fireball. And it's per Ooh. your little uh, visions for, for those gods that you previously encountered um, right before you fucker. Yeah. So, reminder on that. Uh, Calixto. Hmm. And before you start, you are welcome to move yourself closer to Tarlin or at the bottom of those stairs, or you're welcome to remain where you are. Okay, okay. So, can I take a moment to size up my opponents? Uh, could I maybe make an insight check to sort of what I, what I essentially want to do is glance over their appearance and see what I can determine about them. I kind of get the sense that, like, this dude over here is wearing maybe lighter armor and... And I don't know, like, so, so like, what are they holding, that kind of thing? Well, actually, those... So that blue dragon is the head that is on the ground. Oh! Uh, like, so he's dead. And then... He is dead. And then you've got this uh, silver guy who is the silver guy. That just means they're all like, hmm. So they're sorry. just lying. So you just have this. Sorry, you went quiet for a second. The silver guy is what? Uh, the silver draconian that Theodore was carrying. Oh, that he was carrying. So he is also. So it's just yeah. this dude here. You have a severed head, and you have. Um, lifeless body on the ground, and then you have yes, fire. Um, you are quite easily. Um, you don't have to roll for it. Uh, all three of you 
as you kind of peer and investigate, you do recognize this form. You're kind of uncertain at first um, because when you had seen uh, the video that Faraday had recorded, where it was coming in and then putting it, having some. He was wearing a coat of some sort, kind of covering his head. Uh, but as you move, study in the building, at the time, he was not rolling his head. He wore an apartment that seems to be a kind of making up this form, and you're fairly confident that this is the truth. Looks quite formidable. His sword is covered in embers and glows bright red. Um, he looks like he has murderous intent. Hmm. Okay. How how far away? I guess he's twenty five feet away here. Let's um, see. W- well, you are in. You're like on the stairs, so technically slightly further. I think that's how physics works. We correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe it's closer. I don't know. I'm not a Neil deGrasse Tyson. Um, but I would say um, if you wanted to jump down, it would make more sense to jump straight down. You are wearing heavy armor, correct? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So you might take a little fall damage. Um, it'd be an uh, impact that would probably reduce your movement. Hmm. But since you haven't done anything, if you wanted to be close to it, same thing. Okay. I think for now, what I'll do is just throw uh, some needles at him. Okay. Just throw some needles. And that'll be my turn. I'll, I'll start... I'll, so what I'll do is I'll throw some needles and then I'll sprint down the hallway towards the stairs. Do you want to be the, over there first or before you started? Uh, well, I kind of liked the idea that I was like maybe hanging back on this side. Mm-hmm. So I don't mind spending a turn okay. just running to the stairs. Okay. Alright, so Kalisto, you start throwing these needles. How, how large, how heavy are you? So these needles are, I imagine that they're like, they're, they're thick iron needles. So they're kind of heavy when he throws them. And I imagine he, uh, like he would grab, he would go out and buy like large nails essentially. And then just like throw these nails. And, uh, yeah, I imagine them to be like, maybe like six, seven inches long. But like heavy and iron. Just so as you're doing this, as you're chucking these, he takes his glowing giant sword and aptly and gracefully flex, which never this is one. For the rest. Hmm. Okay. And that'll be my turn for now. <laughs> is it an action to go first? Yeah. All right. So it's on this guy. He's just going to stand there. He bats away these nails. And then he points his sword at you, Kalisto. And then does a little gesture as if taunting you, pointing at you and saying, Remember that. He doesn't do anything. He just stands there. Hmm. Eighth of it's gonna be on you. Um, may I first off like roll for investigation or something just to kind of, you know, I know it's, like, glowing and on fire and stuff, but, like, see if I can recognize any of, like, the metal work that might give away, like, who maybe made the armor, or, like, if there's, like, a, you know, a certain tree, you know, where it's, like, this is the heraldry, or, like, people from this region use this. Like, I know they're, like, dragons too, but I just want to see if I can learn anything from the armor that I see. Even though I'm terrified, and I'm also gonna make my way to, to the mayor. 
Go ahead, my man. Or I don't know what you want me to roll, but yeah, I want to see if I can find out that. Oh, sorry. Um, blacksmithing. So, what is that? Do you want me to roll a skill or just like a? Don't you have blacksmith tools? Oh yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, so that's what ends in proficiency. Okay. Here we go. Give me one second and let me figure out what you. Do. One second. Mm-hmm. Okay. That looks like a, a very odd material. Dustin, it's not just the fact that there's this intense heat, the fact that it can withstand this intense heat. And you've heard stories, things of legend, um, old dwarven Duragard mountains used to have some kind of crazy old pre where they said it could handle the breath of When you see these red flags, and at first you're not sure if it's just the universe, you heard that there were these little red flags that would materialize. But this story does not Oh. Well, but that will be tucked away. Um, wait, because the things after the mirror, I just pretty much want to go intervene and like try to intercept and cut off their path to the mirror. But I do not know where she's at. Oh, good call. Uh, she's over here in this corner, and I'll put a token on that. Okay. Um, in that case, I will totally jump just straight down, and then make my way over her, over to her. What kind of armor are you wearing? Uh, I think medium. Hold on. Let me see what actual armor I have though. I have, I think, I have a mithril breastplate. Just kidding. I believe you. Maybe someday. That's what it says. I think I got oh, it from somebody. It's mithril? Hell yeah. Because I think you told me I have a 14 plus dex by it. I think I got it from somebody or a door for somebody. Because other than the that, I would have said a leather armor, but... Okay. The way you said it, it kind of sounded like you were... Um, like kind of making a joke. Because it's supposed to be super. Oh no! I just forgot. I it's nice. it's right okay. there. I put E equipped, and I'm like, that's weird. I thought I had leather armor, but you were like myth, and I'm like, ah, okay, okay perfect. So, um, roll me acrobatics. Thirteen's not bad. Okay, we're gonna say that uh, as you jump down, you kind of brace yourself with your hammer. In your, age. we're gonna also say that it takes about ten feet of movement. So he is within striking distance. He went from straight. Oh yeah, let's fuck him up. Say ten feet to where you're at. Another twenty. There is a bar in front of you, so I'd say. Roll acrobatics or athletics. I can throw my spear at him. Okay. Would you like to do that? Yeah. I guess it's imagine, if you will, uh, as I fall, just throwing the spear at the person and then landing like, like, like oh. Okay, one second. Spear, spear, spear. Attack. 
Come on, thing. Sorry. Okay. I want it. There we go. To hit. So your spear flies through the air. And definitely moves out of the way. Oh, poop. It's close. It's very close, but it. it uh, you do have a bonus action if you would like to. Well, at fifth level, I get two attacks, so I'm just gonna. Another one Ooh. operates and throw one more. Go for it. Let's see it. Wait, are we at fifth level? Oh. Right? Yeah. Didn't we? Or fourth level. Yeah, we hit fifth, fifth level last. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I like just remembered before we started playing because I wrote fifth level big at the top and I was like, oh fuck. 20 to hit. It whizzes by. It whizzes by. I think something in Ethelfled, like, it gets a little quiet. She's like, oh no, this is not good internally. And I'm just, as much as I can move, move towards the uh, mare, and that'll be it. Okay, I still owe you that token. Uh, if that's all for you, Tarlin, you're up. I see everyone just kind of like, he hasn't really done anything aggressive. He just kind of wants us to do stuff. So I'm just kind of standing there at the top of the stairs. I'm going to try one thing. Did it roll? Did I get a... Oh, there it is. Unless... No, no one's up close to him, so I don't get advantage. So yeah, this is a 12 on my spell. Let's shoot okay. away of and peek. Yeah, 12 to hit. Okay. Uh, doesn't quite land. Yeah. After that, I just kind of uh, look at him a bit. What do you want here? We royal knights of peace. We come to take it Fifty of us. She will not forget. We have infiltrated the city. Hmm, that's no good. You've infiltrated the city. Mm. Is there something else you wanted to do, Tom? You got a bonus. Uh, or was that your intention? That was an action, and I'm not going to move closer because that's a bad idea. I'm a squishy boy. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of move on the other side of. Uh, uh, <laughs> Kalisto, make sure he's between me and this dude at least. So that, uh, oh, oh actually, no, I, I can't do that. Because I spell, I can see another level spell as a bonus action. So, the, yes, that is the end of my turn. Okay. Um, do you guys want to do rerolls or do you want to keep this initiative? Be votes. Be prepared. I prefer rerolls personally. I like the the changing keeps things dynamic. Okay. <laughs> um, we we did that. not like that in Alder. I remember. We always do, but I thought I'd ask just for ease. Yeah. Um, everyone, roll initiative. Sixteen. Uh, Fantastic. We're all just floored with like watching him not even like Yeah, right. Man, we have to hit twatter than twenty to hit him. This guy's tough. We should just run away. We should get the mare and get the fuck out. 
certainly knock our ass to sleep if we have to. I mean, I mean, they clearly are after her, so. I mean, yeah. So, April Floyd? <clears throat> yes. Because you are the closest. Uh oh. Fuck. He he doesn't bother like jumping over the bar or anything. Kind of moves up here, and he does instead of swinging the sword, he just kicks you in the torso. He what? Kicks you in the torso. Kicked in your chest. Tries to at least. Does an eight hit? No. <laughs> not. <laughs> I'm oh. insignificant. So it's not like you're a slouch either. Yes, this guy is yeah. shot very, he's wearing this crazy armor. That's his giant fucking stuff. He tries to kick you and roll out of the way. 15 hit as he reels back with a punch. And it does not. Start. All right. So he has tried to kick you. He's tried to punch you. He hasn't tried to use the sword yet. But he has okay. certainly displayed the same kind of nature as the, the draconian that you previously. It almost seems like uh, that is the end of his turn. And turn. All right, I watch him uh, walk up and take some swings at uh, Ethel Fled, and uh, yeah, that's. That is not cool, my guy. So... <laughs> that is not cool, man. <laughs> hey. Cut it out. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> She's, like, sweating because the flames from his armor it is so hot. Right. I feel um, like she's in the forge. Use any of my my new stuff, uh, unfortunately. So I think what Tarlin is going to do is run down. Let me see how far this is. Get my little measuring thing. Run. Oh yeah, that's that's totally doable. Uh, I'm gonna move right here. Move. And I am going to cast a 30-foot cone, kind of angling it away uh, between uh, Aethel Fled and Mayor Raven, because it'll be like, uh, here, let me see. Let me 100%. We'll see, you can um, absolutely do that. 5, 10, yeah. Ten feet. Ten feet is, yeah, still is between both of them, so I can... You're fine. Yeah. Okay. Wait, cool. Wait. Cool. But yeah, I'm going to uh, buh, 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 buh. switch to the freaking spell attack so I can use the right button. That is going to be a DC 15 uh, uh, save, Constitution save for him. Ooh. Okay. It, yeah, I don't know why it's only showing 14. It's 15 now. That's weird. Uh, that is successful. Okay. So, half damage for six. But, yeah, he's not hindered by the ice. I just basically shout... Uh, I basically shout a... You uh, succeed. Uh, Silver Dragon's name when I say... When I should use this spell and, and, yeah, shoot out... Blast this, uh, cone of ice out. Is it Silver Dragon that uses ice? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. I just I, my brain. I'm just like, uh, yes, cold. Yeah, cold mouth. Yeah, yeah. So you were successful. He failed. Oh, he you failed succeed. his save. Correct. You succeed on this, and if you want to cast it for a higher spell slot, you are welcome to do that. Um, you know what? It. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and use the use the third level spell slot, so that's an extra D eight. 
Uh, blah, blah, blah. Grab that. And yeah, he is one. He takes twelve. <laughs> he takes but, uh He is stuck in this ice. He takes twenty-four damage. You notice that this has an, an, an almost eating effect. You can see the flames kind of flicker, and they're not as substantial as they once were. He kind of shivers. Uh, he doesn't drop a score, but you can see it shaking. Uh, this impact is going to hurt. Thank you for bonus. I do have a bonus. I'm going to. Uh, no one's. No, you didn't think it did. I can't. I think it. I can't blow two level spells in a turn anyway. Sorry. Yes, that is the end of my turn. Um. But yeah, he had. Uh, he with that failed save, he is hindered by eye formations and cannot move for one minute unless he uses an action to break away the eye. Oh, I like that. Okay, great. So, Kalisto, you just watched Aetherflood deftly dodge these attacks. Um, but then Tarlin, with his Jesus-like powers, as per usual, <laughs> just thinks of a silver dragon and wastes this thing. He's clearly affected. He's not quite staggered, but you can tell he's he's not as confident as he was a moment ago. Uh, he you can't see his eyes, but his his gaze is focused on Tarlin. Your next. So I forgot because he's still moving across my thingy. I do get uh, attacks of opportunity if he's like I don't know if he's considered re-entering my my range with my spear because my uh, whole arm master. So I wonder if he if he entered the range of my spear, I get an attack of opportunity on him. Oh, and he certainly did at one point. So feel free to roll that up. <laughs> in the midst of Tarland's fuckery, you know. Yeah. He, he's entered the space. I so, yeah, that I... was the exchange. He tried to kick you, he tried to punch you, and then you managed to... Um, Fuck you! I don't know if I hit anything. I need to see... Unfortunately, 14 doesn't Ooh. quite do... <laughs> I was like, too bad you don't have advantage. Right? I was about to say... <laughs> I can't Raven, think of a five minute step right should. now. Uh, <laughs> if, you, if you can think of a reason why you should, you're welcome to pander, but I can't. No, no, I'm, I'm being dumb. I'm just like. No, no, I mean, I'm Raven. just being fair. <laughs> right? I'm like, I don't know, use my inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, so you're, up, you're up next. Okay. Okay. Seeing, and, and there's no question in Kalixto's mind that this guy is a threat. I am going to invoke my armor and haste as an action. Then I am going to action surge for another action. And I am going to sprint to the ledge here and then jump on the railing and say foul knight you will be crushed beneath the heel of salamnic justice and i am going to fucking dive off of this thing towards this ice and attempt to knock him prone down a <laughs> using the full weight of my 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 fall to to knock him over. As a DM, there's a lot to unpack there, so let's <laughs> with an ac acrobatics roll. Okay, let's see. But I'm, I'm not important. I will also say this, that was such a metal epic sort of scene, I will give you uh, an inspiration. Oh, thank you. I may use not, it. Not that the others haven't been crushing it. I but... might use it right fucking now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what does the inspiration do? Remind me. Uh, inspiration. I I don't know. I I don't know. I think we do one d eight. I think we've done that in the past, right? Like an extra one d eight. I can't remember what we've done, but we, let's just say it's one d eight. That's reasonable. One d eight. Okay. 
updates the, the for oh the, let's go let's go okay. okay i will say this because you're flanking you do get advantage right i would consider that a flank uh on the acrobatics roll oh you did acrobatics that's right okay okay there was a lot there. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah. So the first thing I did was I jumped off, right? No, you're good. That's okay. okay, you did great. You, you <laughs> take no damage. Um, I will say... All right, so what I was attempting to do was dive through the air, sort of grabbing this icy figure and using, like, myself and my fall to essentially just make a push attack to knock him prone. And you get a 15 on that. I will say this. I'm going to roll athletics at I got, a disadvantage. I got a 15 on my acrobatics. I have I have not yet rolled athletics for the Okay, push. let's go ahead and do that. Okay. I have an advantage because I'm focusing. Okay, okay. I like this. Okay. You do it with such fervor, and, and you're, like, relying on, like, pure instinct, and, and there's adrenaline pumping. You don't feel the heat of the metal, but you know it's intense. As you work your way to knock this creature, let's say you know it's true. You're trying to knock this fiery draconian to the ground. You are quite successful. Um, it's almost as if when you activated your armor, you could feel the presence minutes ago. It almost feels like you guided your movements. You do it with extreme agility. And you are just one of the um, I presume you would like to do something else? Uh, yeah. So let me think about this. So I have moved, I've used an action to knock a prone. I am now going to step up and use an action to try and grapple him. And I am going to try and hold him prone. Okay. So I'm going to roll one more time with advantage. I got a nat 20. I will say. Yes, you did. Okay. So you feel a presence with your people. And it feels like this metal ship for you, you are absolutely able to grab this creature. Nice, nice. Okay. So he can now not get up because his move speed is reduced to zero. And it takes half his move speed to stand back up. So he is right. locked in place. Correct. What's up? My my spell last turn already reduced his speed to zero. Yeah, so this... if you knock him, he would have to spend his turn breaking the ice, and then he couldn't. Oh, true, true. So I can, I don't even fucking have to. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, that's crazy. Okay, well, we can wreck on it. Yeah. yeah, we can wreck on it. Okay, in that case, yeah, I'll just make an attack then. Okay. Um. Question. And that, that nat 20 was fun, though. That nat 20 yeah, was fun. That nat 20 was fun. Uh, does this draconian count as a humanoid? Yes. Okay. Then in that case, I am going to make a precise attack against this guy with my sword. Oh, shit. Okay, so a little extra damage, I guess. My attack, I rolled a 24. Uh, my, my favorite foe, because he's a humanoid, is going to do three extra damage. Because I'm currently focusing, I'll add an extra two damage. And my precise strike adds another three damage. Uh, so how much is that? Six, 13, 15 damage. 15. So okay. it does take all of that, and I would say you only expended yeah, movement yeah. even with the athletics. Mm -hmm. There we go. Whoa! Yeah, okay, that works. Well, I was—I just realized the roll was at advantage, so I rolled twice. But... 
Oh, I see. Well, you are hasted, and you have multi. Oh, true. Because you're fit. Yeah. Oh, action. no, 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 but I multi-classed. So I've, I, I use one action to knock him prone, and I use my other action to attack, and my bonus action to focus. Okay. So I'm, I'm all spent else? now. No, I'm all good. So 15. The tides are turning this back on you. It's me. It's on you, on you. Is it? Okay. Yes, yes. Well, since we've been doing so good and everyone is making a hit except me, I'm going to have to step up my game. But let's see what magic I can use. I think since he's so close, I might just go ahead and stick with physical attacks just because all my magic won't really help in this situation. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna stab him twice with my spear, and then bonus action for my polo master, hit him with the butt end. But uh, let's... Oh. Yeah, like, battle scream, just like, adrenaline pumping, like, I almost got hit! This is happening so fast, that was so cool! Wait, is he still on the floor or no? He is. He is. Yes. Okay, yes. well then I will stab down. And not up. <clears throat> Yes, he does have no damage. Cool. Shit. Roll that damage. Hit. That's for sure a hit. Oh, yeah. lord. Second attack to hit. Nice. And Nine. then... The third to hit. And that one's just bludgeonings, but let me roll that one. One second. Last... So two piercing, piercing, and bludgeoning. So it's like he stabs it down, stabs it down, does a quick little turnaround, and then he slams the butt end down. And you do have advantage so that twenty five works. Um. All of the oh, the damage. Mm -hmm. Duh. But yeah, you've got advantage, so yeah. yeah. Well, it's it's set it. Oh wait a second. It's set it in the roll. It's not, so, oh, it's not actually rolling. It's just, it's I know, I just noticed that. I was like, wait a minute, that's broken. Well, it was just meant to be 14. That's what it rolls down. Uh, <laughs> same thing, that's a grand total of 18 damage. Assuming I can do that. Um, okay. he's, he's in bad shape. And I believe that's everything you've got, right? Yeah. No, that's it. <laughs> Go and roll initiative. Oh, it did worse. Good lord. Yeah. Is everyone's initiative nice? Here? Yes. Okay. And Ava, what do you got? Three. Right? <laughs> Darling, you're up. Go get him, Tiger. All right. Um. Let's see. I think now, uh, after watching that the ice do so much the first time, uh. I am going to, uh, if I Ray of Frost, is that going to give me advantage? Am I have advantage on that? You would. Sorry. I know that. All right. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to look down, uh, uh, like, and so I pull out my, uh, Solinari Holy Symbol, which is basically just a large silver circle. And it like tied onto it. Basically, it's tied. I'm wearing it as a necklace, but it's like it's basically just got rope tied around the top. And I just kind of hold it as I as I point my hand down and uh, just and blast him with the ray of frost. Uh, so twenty three hits. Twenty three. Uh, 
Yeah, so that's, let's see. Seven cold damage. Uh, 14. Okay. So yeah, I blast him with more cold. Um, and, uh, and I don't really say anything. I'm, I, I look over, I don't say anything to him. I look over to Mayor Raven and be like, no, I am, uh, I, Tell her she, you need to move uh, to get away from him now, um, as we're like basically wailing on this dude. Full persuasion. Okay. With um, advantage, <laughs> it's it's an easy sell. <laughs> so let's see how she. Okay. Okay. She, she listens, and she moves. All the way over. Okay, it's better now. Now it's fixed. Okay, anything else? Um. I am. I can cast one more thing. So I'm going to uh, pass uh, Dragon's Breath on myself, choosing ice, but not I can't use the action yet, so it is basically readied for next turn. Uh, and then I am going to uh, end my turn after that. Okay. The colleagues, so you're up next. You haven't thought. You kind of look around the room. Everyone's evacuated. Nobody left. Natural. You see Mayor Raven across the way, standing in the corner. There could be no witness. And this might be a possible solution to put in the three weeks of the You hear. It almost like it doesn't feel like it. You look at this creature and you can tell it's one or two hits away. Vulnerable. What would you like to do? Uh, Calixto is not going to hesitate in the slightest. I am going to make two attacks with Matute. At advantage. Thank goodness. You three hits. <laughs> All right, and I'll apply my sneak attack to that as well. Uh, and then I will make my second attack. That hits. Let's see the other one. Okay. So that is a total of. 13, 13, and 13. 26 damage. How would you like to do this? Oh, um, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Oh, man. <laughs> I, mean, I don't have to fight you ever. Calixto, who is still... <laughs> oh, man. In his, his heavy Salomnic armor, having jumped off this is going to step forward and sort of repeat himself and say, crushed beneath the heel. And he's going to stomp on his chest and say, of Salomnic justice. And I'm going to plant my rapier into the slit of his helm with precision. And you feel something give as you do so. You're Stabbing not through the flame that you can see, clearly not the metal you can feel left. You know that somewhere in your rapier right now, a lot of scales. As a reaction, may I ask, uh, do I have reason to believe this guy might explode as soon as I do this? Roll an issue. Or not a cop. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no, 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 sorry. Oh, God. <laughs> Um, 
insight, insight, insight. It's the other one with the eye. Okay. Okay. Uh, initiative. <laughs> oh, Very Lord. Initiative? Oh, wow. No initiative. <laughs> oh, God. Five. All right. I Since I don't... Well... I, I'm going to say, since assuming I, I don't know for certain, I'm just going to shout to, like, everybody, like, Get back! I don't know what will happen! And then I'll... Dash away. Dash away out of you there. Do, you don't know what happened. And Hartman, uh, so go ahead and put your tip through your dash into two. Okay. You are out of combat. So I stomp up, execute him, and then I am going to bonus action. Dash the fuck back. Across and leave the, the mare, like. Drag the mare with you or something. Oh, wait, where is the mare? I thought she left. Oh, did she? Uh, oh, you know next. what? Let me see. No, I made two attacks. Oh, there's the mare. Oh, you know what I'll do? I'll stand in front of the mare so that if we're within range, I like body block her. Uh, you are out of combat, so if anyone else would like to take cover, you're welcome to do so. I was about to say, can you item interaction flip a table? Yeah, yeah. That's right, good. I, I was just too. looking at that. Totally. I'm just going to jump on the other side and like hide under the bar. Yeah, I flipped the yeah, table. Yeah, I guess I just jump down above the bar, above the uh, uh, banister for, since I'm on the second floor. I just kind of like duck cover down um, and maybe <laughs> cast shield on myself. I was thinking about that, but. Okay. Arlen, you ready, shield? Yes. Um, but as you're about to cast it, it happens. Just like with the others. Hmm. Hmm. Calixto stands up. We might be clear. I'm going to turn and what face Mayor Raven and say, Are you hurt? No, I. It was incredible. I not heard. I'm gonna I, check my companions. Check April Flood. Make sure everyone. She made her way over as you were writing yourself up and checking on the mayor. Uh, Tarlin is actually while this is going on, makes his way down, and since he's got that dragon's breath, basically, going. He looks at the... He basically grabs the head and tosses it on top of the body over here and uh, is going to uh, freeze the bodies. Wait, is he taking he, the bodies? No, I, no, I'm not taking the bodies. I'm basically just... Dra I'm basically ice-breathing the corpses over there in the corner so that, just in oh. case, nothing happens to them. I just want to, like, kind of freeze them... Um, um, okay. So I, I, think... I, I can roll my, my frost damage uh, for that. So, Tarlin, as you approach, say you're probably about right here. Yeah. Hey, Flifflet, are you standing right there at the moment? Well, I was just going to say afterwards, I do want to make my way back to check out that armor again and to see if I can pull some scales. As you're making oh, your yeah. way back, you're about right here. So. I roll insight. <laughs> I'm sorry, you said insight? Inside or perception. You didn't listen. I was going to say, is, are we rolling initiative again? No. Yeah. <laughs> I almost said it again. Inside. My perception is way better. I'm going to roll that. Uh, normal roll? Or, uh, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think I'd have advantage for any reason. As you're walking up, you hear a sound. And you've heard this sound before. Many, many, many times. It's almost as if somebody's taking a log and placing it in a fire underneath a forge. And you look closely, 
You're not 100% sure, but you think you saw a little flicker of an ember. Like in the man's armor? This is very intriguing. I want that armor. Let's Would you like to continue to dead guy? And uh <laughs> he doesn't need it anymore. <laughs> Let's shuck this dude like an oyster. Get your armor and uh uh no, oh my God. metal could be precious, <laughs> it could be like it could melt it down, we could turn it into stuff, like you don't even know. I know. I'm, I'm just. I'm not. I'm not. Like, I'm not knocking the hustle at all. I mean, it's I a pretty you. badass helmet. Yeah, it, right. <laughs> if we could I learn could things. Armor, I would want it. Okay, let's put it that way. Yeah, we this could is probably learn. like yes, a wet so dream for her. Right. She's just like, how did they do that? How is it alive? How is the armor alive? Okay, now Tarlin. As yeah. you approach, you feel that odd sensation you felt many times now, where you can kind of feel something in the air. The thickness. Yeah. And then it feels like popping. Ugh. And then cliques through. The room suddenly gets colder to you. Not by much. A shiver. One degree. Roll to shiver. Okay. <laughs> Eighth of flip. You're the first to see anything particularly unusual as you're all feeling these sensations. You do see in front of you a corpse. There is no fire. But an arm slowly points towards you. Oh, weird. Definitely staring at the arm and probably taking a few steps closer because that's what movies do and that's how you die, so. <laughs> as you do, you suddenly see, as you hear what sounds like a log underneath an anvil, you see what you think is an ember. It makes your imagination. You do see an arm stretch out towards you and you see smoke start to billow that arm. There's no flame yet. But there is an arm pointing at you. From I'm gonna port. point at it to outstretch my arm. That's when you see a very, very large ball of flame materialize in this hand. Oh man. Oh shit. Like, I'm about to get blasted in the face. We're all about to Would get you blasted. Like to oh, God. Well, You're not I'm... Common, but there I'm... is a weird situation here. Yeah, it's a little scary. Because I can vortex that shit away from me, if need be, but... I... Is it going to hit us in the face, or is it more like, like a, a glowing orb that's like a ball of fire that I can, like, it's grab in it? It's a thing. It feels to have murderous intent. <laughs> okay. Well then, I'm gonna cast Vortex and just teleport that bitch like way over somewhere in the opposite area, like I don't know, away from all of this as far as I can. Oh shit. Okay, where would you like for it to go? <laughs> Whoa. Thirty feet away from us in this direction. Oh shit. Okay, I love that. Okay. It's effective. And as you're catapulting this creature. I, I, is Vortex like an instantaneous thing? Is it like an era thing? Oh, shit. Yeah, let me look it up. It's a second level spell. I know that. Hold on. We'll say for now what it does is you I kind of... 30 feet, but... Well, let's look it up. I'm curious okay. to know what it's, the flavor uh, of this is. Like, it's instantaneous, like. yeah. 90 feet is the range, actually. Okay, so in the nick of time... I just all of, your, all of your uh, blacksmiths instincts are kind of going off you you see what you think could be there it doesn't make sense because this creature for all intents and purposes appears dead um and Calypso dealt what would have been a fatal blow 
you, in the nick of time, fling this creature over here. And instead of a fireball erupting and hitting you, it does land over here. And that's when you can hear, and it defies all logic, but you can hear the clanking of armor. And you can see standing before you, once again, is this creature. The flames start to not erupt, but they are taking form once again. And this creature glows with um, an orange hue. Charlotte. Hmm. Fuck. Roll our con. Oh. Shit. We gotta get out of Roll here. Roll our Also, con. the con saving throw, but Roll I don't know con. if that matters in this is instant. The spell vortex is a con saving throw, but this thing was already like dead, so I don't know if that counted as like an automatic fail or not. Otherwise, we have to redo that and roll um, a saving throw. I think we're good here. Okay. Ooh, Carlin, it's gonna be our constitution. Arcana. Oh, Arcana. I'm sorry. Ma magic. <laughs> roll for magic. <laughs> I was like, That's oh a... god, I'm taking damage. <laughs> okay, 15 Arcana. You feel, and there's no doubt in your mind, an electrical presence in the air. Uh, it's partly a scientific understanding, and it's partly a magical understanding. Um, but you also feel as if when you've had these visions, you feel... As if you're having a vision, only this time it's completely real. The surrealness. Okay. And then Calixto, it is unnaturally cold. Hmm, I don't like the look of, of all of this. Standing before you is once again this creature. And he begins... Is it, is it like a devolved version of itself, or does it look like it, how it was in the very beginning? It's not as fiery. Okay. But it's still there. Can we? It's still there. Can we react and do anything? <clears throat> yes, absolutely, you can. Okay, I'm going to turn to Mayor. R how, like. It, it sounds like all this happened pretty quickly. Am I still hasted? Yes. We'll say that it's going to be a turn-based haste as mm -hmm. opposed to a time-based haste. Okay. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to turn to Mayor Raven uh, and say, we've got to get you out of here. And I would like to grab her and zoom her over to the door if I can. I can cast uh, Morgan Bond on her. Yes, you could absolutely do all those things. Thank you, level five. Right now? I will cast, she must stay within 60 feet of me. And I, I the flat out loud, I'll be like, Madam, don't you move past 60 feet within me. Oh, we'll, be protect, we'll be protected as long as you are. Yeah, I was gonna tell her to skedaddle. Should I not? Well, yeah, we, well, yeah. Oh, you, yeah, I guess he'll probably chase us I outside. Think we should just run. I think we should run, yeah. Yeah. There's presently no danger right here. Just a couple of corpses. I mean, we could fight it again, but is it just going to come back? You should take that head. It might be useful. Oh, yeah, I'll snag the heads. Hell yeah. If anything, again, I need the dragon scales. That could be turned into shit. <clears throat> so wait. Bones can like, be turned into yeah. stuff. Yeah. We can boil we the skulls and get the marrow and use that. <laughs> we gotta do our monster hunter business with this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. So I guess we're skedaddling? I think it's I, the safest yeah, and best decision. Agreed, agreed. So it's Harlan. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you I... sense it. You know that there's some sort of magical force, and you know it's of a lightning nature, and you feel it coming from the presence of this blue head that's on the ground. 
you could try to warn your friends as a free action. Okay. Um, I, yes, I do. I point at the blue dragon head and uh, say, get away from that. Uh, um, basically, I can, yeah, I, I do that. Um, so, before you can truly react, you hear this, you kind of pause, look at uh, Tarlin. I need Aethelflit and Calixto to roll dexterity saving throws. Oh, shit. Yeah. She. What happens? Arlen, you, you feel magic. You know it quite well. And you were able to understand that there is an attack coming. Yeah. You you know it's of a lightning and definitely of a magic. You warn your friends. Uh, Aethelflit, Calixto, you have just enough time to Hi. roll advantage. <laughs> Bro, I'm fucked. It's fine. Uh, 15, then? I need both of you to roll. Oh, actually. Oh, that's right. I'm hasted. If you would have said, like, con, I would have been, like, dope. But... Uh, do I add a 2 to deck saves while I'm hasted? I think I do. Both of you take 29 damage. Jesus. Oh. Morning is not quite enough. And you feel an intense energy just jolting your bodies. You should absolutely run. Erupts from this blue thing. Oh, holy that was like half my health. Shit. That did not feel that good. That was more than half my health. This creature approaches, and I do need everyone to roll initiative. Fuck. Oof. No. God damn. Mayor Raven. What are you doing? <laughs> if she gets hit, oh, I also take damage if she gets hit. And usually it's fine, but now I only have 12 HP, so. <laughs> and now I need everyone to go to Discord. Oh, uh -oh. shit. Okay, well, let's that. go. Okay, is anyone not able to see this? Actually, let me switch and then I'll notice. Binge windows. Okay, can everyone see the media player? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. We're going to change this very immediately. Eddie, can you see? Eddie? Yeah, I can see. What you start to see is disgusting, nauseating, revolting. You can see limb appearing. You can see neck appearing underneath this head. What was once just kind of a trophy, a trophy is now beginning to grow a form new. But what you see is an unnatural it's unflattering. You can see veins poking out. Although the sheen is still there, it's beginning to congeal. It's still not 100% in form, but it's growing. You see the silver dracon stand up, an April for you and Kalista. Little hair on, on the back of your neck, standing up still. 
uh, you are really seeing what has just occurred. Now, he steps one very terrifying thing. The tides have completed. And it occurs to you then that something's horribly wrong. Instead of exploding, of dying, and of unleashing sweetness, poison, acid, it just and then you start to lose this is something Something has to be afraid of my hands. I don't know how to listen to it. This creature in front of you, the render point, bursts in the face. The sword erupts first. This is a layer of fire that you haven't seen before. So while it seems like you were able to incapacitate him, you were. You dealt a death blow. He's back. He's hard. You feel overwhelmed by how much you feel currently like you're in one of your visions. We know every one of your visions seems to have some tie to death, some core. And it occurred to these things are familiar. This creature hasn't engaged yet in the moment of shock. He kind of stands right here. And then we're going to go to window two on Discord. Window three, actually. Are you all able to see this? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. Yep. Let me let me drop out and come back. Well, shit. Here, let me just play. It. <laughs> Dude, this is so fucking awesome. Okay, let me drop out of Discord. That's that's all the all the, the all clips. <laughs> Damn. Holy shit. Yeah, so this is not good. These three creatures appear to be unkillable. The service of the to It occurs to all of you that there was something odd in that interaction with Igni. You felt that power struggle. Now you're starting to make it. Something that's you guys are you know this guy tried to cut you that sword over in the corner you have to kill him and he can have him ingested today all rolled your initiative colleagues though you do have a moment to react I'm sorry, could you run that, that by me again? It's your turn. Oh, it's my turn. Okay. Um, do I have Mayor Raven held with me still? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, you have the Wardian Bond, though, so she's, like, resistant to, like, all types of damage and stuff. Plus one AC. Gotcha. Uh, so, do these things look like they will fucking attack me if I move away from them? Yes. Okay. They have murderers. Okay. Then in that case, I am going. I'm still holding her. I am going to use an action to disengage. A bonus action to dash. And then she and I are going to get out of here and move into the city out of this room. Okay. Uh, what, is, what does it look like outside? Is everything on fire? People. Uh, as you screw outside, everything appears to be normal. Everything appears to be normal? Yep. Oh, I shit. Mean, there were only a handful of people that saw some stuff, so I'm sure they went to the guards. I'm sure 
they probably weren't telling every citizen, but they might have been like, run, run. So there's no pandemonium, nothing's on fire, there's no damage. When this man walked in, he was old Theodore. Yeah, right. He had human skin on. It was weird that he was carrying two, like a, a he headed dragonian. And sure. another dragonian. But like, he didn't draw as much attention as there would need to be for there to be like a pandemonium. They might think somebody's a drunk. But everything's fairly normal, so you're welcome to leave, and you're welcome to take Aerate with you. Uh, well, I'm not gonna just abandon my comrades back there, but what I'll do is I'll, like, now that we've escaped, I'll turn to Mayor Raven and I'll say, uh, I have to go back for my comrades. Uh, Becklin. Find Becklin and tell her we're here. And then I'm going to turn and... Oh, jeez. I have one action left. I guess I will... Do I have a potion? I do not. Fuck. I will take the dodge action. And I will take cover near the door. So I'll raise my buckler and prepare to guard myself. Okay. So then it's going to be... That's everything. Yeah, that's everything. Okay. I think I'm going to do... Initiative streams is like pretty much. But I would be nice. I'll do it if we can. So, we've already had a very dangerous spell from this one. It would be in the silver room. In Calixto, you've decided to die. Very prudent. So, he is going to try to punch you. I'm assuming a 12 does not hit. Out of 15. Oh, and I'm at this. Wait, for whom? For a colleague, so. Am I cutting out again? Oh, sorry, I was muted. Bit. Yeah, yeah. I'm having a little bit of trouble hearing you. Um, no, so I, I took the dodge action, so they would have to, they're a disadvantage, and they would have to top a 20. Oh, shit. Well, even, even a disadvantage, they definitely don't. Topping a 20. Okay, so he does swing on you, misses. Missing. And just smiles at, at you, Kalista. Appears he has picked his opponent. All right, up next is Aethel Flood. Oh man, and all three of these guys are active? Uh, correct. Well, I'm gonna cast Cure Wounds on myself. Mm. Start with that. Okay. Which is... We'll say that counts as a bonus. It's a first level school. Okay, well then... Unless you wanna cast. No, uh, I will, I guess, take a stab at each, and then bonus action, heal myself. Okay. And then probably try to move backwards a little bit. All right, roll up your first one and choose a target. We'll see if I move at all. Uh, this one first, that one second. Makes sense to me. Okay. Let's see. Here's the first and the second. Nice. And then if they hit. Uh, 17 hit the blue for sure. I think we're flanking. Them. 12 piercing. Yeah, 12 piercing. Mm hmm. And then 1d8 plus int for your wounds. 
Touch myself on the forehead and heal myself. Good God. Well, better than nothing. Are we doing double heals? That's oh, that's awful. right. Well, I guess it'd be double wounds. That's, that's the new. It's far better math. Okay. Uh, so that would be. Oh, wait. Do I roll then, or was it just double the. Do you. Oh, or no. Yes. So yeah, let's just do that. But we'll see. Just do the same thing. So you can feel for I'm sorry, did you, you want me to roll again? Huh? I'm okay sorry. with just the one heal too. I mean I don't mind either way. No, well we decided early on we're gonna do. Okay. Yeah, so you do double heal, and then the 13 does not hit the silver, so is there anything you want to do with your movement? Um, how far away are they? I feel like... No, no. No, just because there's nowhere to go except out. I will not move. Okay. Oh, but nope. Never mind. Just kidding. Yeah. Nope. That's it. That's the end. Okay. All right. Garland. All righty. Let's see here. I am going to. Uh. I guess I will. Um, fuck. <laughs> your your ice magic was very effective earlier. Yeah. On the one um, hand, you were very squishy, and it would be difficult for you to sort of pull a lot of attacks from this guy. But yeah. you are very well suited. You could also try to maybe find a way to escape, or maybe try to. I mean. There is a back door out the bar, right? From from behind here. Yep. Everyone fled out. Okay. Yeah, um I kind of look to the others and tell them we need to leave. So I uh um I'm going to uh since there is a exit back here, I'm going to disengage. And let's see. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Measure some things. I will probably suck at jumping over the bar. Because um, I am a very scholarly type guy. I will disengage and run <laughs> back here. Um, so that's my... Uh, oh! I will use a... I... Do I have a... You know what? I, before I... Um, hmm, no, I'll... I thought I took her healing word. Did I not? Did I not get it from my stuff? I guess I didn't. Oh no, 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 that's right. Because I took I have cure wounds, not healing word. Um shit. Because I was too far to healing word to cure wounds uh April Flint before I left. Uh uh, I probably here. Let me see real fast. So. I was right here. I shouldn't uh, hopefully so. be one hit KO'd if that's what you're worried about at this point. Well, I still want to get, wanna you, get a you a little bit of use my, uh, for action economy. So I appreciate that. Five foot, and then 
Yeah, I'll just do that. I'll, I'll do that. Is I'll step over to you, cure you, and then get to run, run the rest of my movement. So I'll go ahead and do a cure wounds on you. Thank you. Yeah. Oop. Uh. Oh, it didn't. It didn't roll. <laughs> well, I hope there's a spell save. I mean, I get why. I feel like I'm dead and shit. Uh, <laughs> this is funny, right? If you, if you don't roll high enough, you don't get healed. <laughs> uh, uh, so that's uh, eighteen for double healing. That works. Or do you want me to roll twice? Yeah, let's, just, can... let's just say you can double the the roll number from the first roll, or you can double it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Double the front. Double the. No okay. So that would be. Let's just. I'll just roll again. It's. Fine. I mean, either way, it'll. Well, yeah. I mean, toss it a lot better with double dice. Yeah, I was gonna say I'll just do double dice. So uh, six. That ten. Still, ten is a nice chunk. Mm -hmm. Still good. Yeah, I'll, I'll say let's do this just to keep it fun. So and to keep it lively. Uh, let's just say you can choose at the beginning of your heal which one you want to do if you want to do double dice actually after the result you can see the result of the first roll and decide if you want to do that seems okay I'm... okay back there so yeah that was the rest of my yeah, movement i took a five foot step over to uh ethel fled uh healed her real fast and then ran the rest of the way my, my ass back okay that works for me uh, so that is going to put it on this side. It's still 20 feet away from it. So Tarlin, uh, instead of just making a dash for it, you, you had the consideration of the team your fellow comrade. Um, and, and you could have just booked it. Who knows what you You decide you want to be a good friend, a good ally of the team, and you feel um, But in doing so, do you allow I'm gonna go ahead and reaction shields so I got an 18 on my AC okay uh he definitely does bring his sword down he rolls a 23 okay I'm assuming that hits yes sir I've got an 18. Okay. So his sword as a base does 2d6. Now that it is encompassed in flame, it does 2d6 additional fire damage. Um, okay. On top of that, the modifier. So okay. he does 17 points of damage. He brings okay. the sword down. Uh, you can feel you know, the weapon. I can't hear you right now. You got really muffled. Oh god, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, sorry about that. Uh no, what I was saying is uh his base weapon does 2d6 slashing damage. Uh does yeah. an additional 2d6 damage from fire as well. Uh 17, and that is a right? total of 17 damage. Yeah, so I heard 17. I didn't hear what was after that. Oh, yeah, sorry. Okay. Uh, so he does 17 damage, um, but he does have a multi-attack, so he's going to swing again. Okay. That is... Uh, does a 14 hit you? No, because, uh, yeah, I still have the, the shield for this whole turn, so that's an 18. I have an 18. Nice. Okay. So you have the the wherewithal and, and the, the gumption to go ahead and cast shield. While he was able to slice through that first wave um, in dealing with 17 damage. He is not able to get you a second time. Uh, so that's very good. Um, that is the end of his turn. And then it is back on this blue creature. His wings are flapping. His eyes are glowing. Um, and he is going to channel from his palms more lightning. April's letting Calypso. You can kind of feel or you can see or react to it. I need both of you to roll dexterity standards. Ooh. Uh, 
Oh no. Okay. Calixto, that is a failure. Ablefoot, that is a save. <laughs> Oh my god. Good lord. Leak still, you take the full 35. Would you take half of that? Which would be. Let's say 17. I am blasted unconscious. We need to get the fuck out of here. Alright, Clark right, goes down. down. That is going to be uh, everyone roll initiative. You and said roll initiative? Yes, roll initiative. What? Nice. You got a higher initiative. You have a higher deck. You'll go for me. Okay, so I've got. 17 with a red. 19 from the blue. Arlen, roll insight. Okay. Or Arcana. Oh yeah, let me do that one. I close, that damn it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that is going to put it on the silver. First one. Silver is a 23, 17 for the blue, and then the red. No, 17 for the red, and then 19 for the red. Okay, so it's on the silver first. Now, Tarlin, <clears throat> you rolled an 11 Arcana. You feel a flicker from Cleek's, though, as he falls to the ground. And you're not entirely certain he's alive right now. And again, you kind of feel this sort of unwavering, unnatural, sort of surreal kind of feeling. Um, yeah. And you just feel but you're looking around, and you don't see skeletons, but it's almost like you can feel them. Essence that you can't quite explore. Not like when you watch the the caravan of dead um, from the encampment. Um, kind of this like sense of. Okay. And then, um, what's on the it's on the silver dragon? Everyone's rolling nineteen for eight foot, so twenty one starting nineteen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, Sorry. that's actually perfect. Uh, the blue is nineteen. We'll say he goes last, uh, and then the red is seventeen. So, um, the silver eight foot is coming for you. So he rolls a nine uh, to no, attack. No, no. Not, nine will not hit. So he uses a fist at you. Nine, you can hear. He rolls a ten. So he's unable to hit you with incapacitation. It feels like there's an odd amount of pain scaling. Perhaps he should see it. But he's clearly not going to. It's just kind of swinging. Like he doesn't do anything else. I think he doesn't. And this guy. Wait, is it my turn? Yeah, what is that? Um, 
I thought Fled, like, kind of to herself, which is going to be like, you know, like, Fair Day, where are you? Um, and then she's going to turn and look at, uh, Tala and be like, Tala, get the fuck out of here! And, uh, that is her plan. So she, with all of her, like, the adrenaline rushing through her, she's been nearly put down. She got healed, but now they're down again. Like, I think she's starting to feel, like, a little scared. And seeing, like, this night that hit so hard and that was just, like, flying through the air now on the floor is also, like, probably scaring her a little bit. So, like, this is the fight or flight, and now it has turned to flight, and she's just like, we gotta get out of here. So she is going to cast water on herself and then pick up, do her best to, like, essentially haul him over her shoulder and just run out of there. Which way are you running? This way. Towards the the quickest way. Towards the door. Towards towards Calixto so I can get him. Like it's not gonna be good, but she's gonna get him and drag okay. carry him away. And the fastest way is probably forward out the door, cause at least there will be more people and more space. Cause yeah. It would take two opportunity attacks, but you're welcome to That's okay. Okay. Damn, heroic moment. Oh, well, she All can't. Right. She's. Nah, yeah, she can't leave people. She's not necessarily a medic, but I feel like, yeah, she, like, fixes things, you know? Like, she builds things. She supports on the battlefield, not necessarily uh, as, like, an attacker. Damn, so. She's a real one. Like, if he goes down, they are very. They lose an edge. Like, magic's good and like her machines are cool and stuff and savvy's fine but like he he's a knight and stuff yeah so i'm guessing this we need to talk about that shit y'all doing some crazy stuff i'm guessing a nine and 12 do not correct if it helps my ac is 16. i heard if it helps i switched over to my phone Oh, my AC is 16, because, again, I'm, I I thought of her as someone in the battlefield, like, yeah, just, like, I guess, yeah, tanky in a weird way. That works. Okay, so uh, you take no opportunity. You take no opportunity attacks. The silver kind of swings at you. Um, the blue kind of claws at you. Um, neither one of them are able to to hit you at all um you you are able to pick up uh colleagues though but roll athletics for me athletics boom i was gonna say he's not dead so technically his body isn't an object yet i swing <laughs> a hammer around and metal and shit like ain't no thing or yeah so thing, you're but... You're quite used to lugging stuff around. This is just a suit of armor with a human in it, as far as you're concerned. Um, which, for some reason, makes you feel more comfortable, because it's just armor. <laughs> happens to have a little flesh in it. Um, you are able to pick him up. It will half your movement speed from the extra weight, because this is multiple hundreds of pounds. Mm -hmm. uh, I would also say it gives you disadvantage on... I forgot I cast Blur on myself, though. That was supposed to give people disadvantage on me, but I guess it didn't matter. No. It's going to give you disadvantage on decks, let's say that. But everything else, you're fine. Okay. But you're welcome to, to take this burden on. Uh, Kalisto, you are not conscious. Um, but you f you're like in a dream at the moment, and you feel somewhat safer. Um, okay. Was, is there anything else you want to do with your turn? You want to run outside? Eighth of Luke, you would run outside? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, you are able to move outside. I'll have to grab another map for that, but we can certainly do And then... Away from danger. And then, Tarlin, you are now alone in this room. I'm with sorry. 
three draconians. Uh, what, what would you like to do? Dude, you've got this. The others have gotten away. He, um, he really isn't using this spell because it's cowardly and he he does he does just hates it. <laughs> he casts expeditious retreat on himself, which lets him dash this turn as part of the spell and dash as a bonus action every turn. And then I'm gonna disengage and then move sixty run sixty feet out the back door. I like it. Nice. Let's go. Uh, basic. Yeah. I will not do it in front of anybody, basically, but since the others have left, <laughs> Harlan's like, mm. Very well. Goodbye. And just five. And then burn. And then, yeah. Just go. 60 feet gets me to the edge out the back. It does. Okay. So you are 60 feet away. We'll say that you're able to kind of navigate to the back. Let me put you guys on the center. Unless, uh, unless I was like, ba I went through the bar, but unless there's like straight backwards, another exit, then I would have gone straight backwards. Like, cause that's closer. Like that's the back closer. of the kitchen or something or, yeah. Yeah. Cause I see there. Yeah. Oh, okay. We're out. Oh. <laughs> <Not bad. laughs> that one looks very cartoony. How about this one? No, I don't mind it at all. It's, it's... I don't mind it at all either. I like that. Okay. Right. It, just looks like, it just looks like a. I'm just like, yay, yeah, battle man. Yeah, I'm sold. Okay. Where's your man? All right, so uh, let's see. Let's say you are all exiting this. Eh, it's probably a little bit. Let's say this one. Fuck it. So you're exiting here. Um, that does look very bad for me. That one that we just did. <laughs> right? Okay. So I'm going to put their tokens out here. Well, technically not yet. Um, Harlan, let's say you're over here in this little area. And then... Or actually, let's... You're right here. And then the rest of you are right here. There we go. I'm so big. Let me, All right. let me, let me. Oh, I can't shrink it. <laughs> That's all right. We're giants amongst men. In what? presence and stature. <laughs> eh, whatever. It works. Um... <laughs> so they're technically not outside yet. Um, but they, they are not exactly going to want you guys to see so they are in pursuit, or will be in pursuit. Um, and then Calixto, let's just say you're over here with April Fool. Okay, so Tarlin, that's the end of your turn. That means it is, in fact, on the blue. Give me one second. By the way, early you said I heard like the rattling of bones, like skeletons moving. Right, is what you had said. Correct. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you didn't hear it, but you felt as if those creatures like, were, were around you. Okay, the blue, April Flood, you've managed to evacuate. You're holding, um, Calixto. You are, you're doing a fine job of it all, but you're definitely holding a very large person. Um, the blue, instead of casting the lightning bolt that they, they previously cast, you expect to get shocked. You maybe kind of peer back over your shoulder, knowing it's right behind you. Um, and then you see a white sort of film escape the hands of this draconian and wet flies through the air. No fuck. Okay. Guys, okay. Uh, There's currently... Support. So I'm gonna mute my... I'm gonna turn things down real quick. I'll be right back.
Okay, cool. Well, I feel like I'm just kind of stuck, so whatever happens, happens. Okay. You got so it fills this. Fills a 20 foot cube. We're going to keep going. Uh, the webs are difficult terrain. They lightly obscure the area, but it's broad daylight. Um, if they aren't anchored between two solid masses, such as walls or trees, they're just laying on the floor. So you've got 20 layer or 20 feet of web around you. Uh, each creature that starts its turn in the webs or that enters them during its turn must make a dead saving throw. And then on a failed save, the creature is restrained. A uh, creature restrained by the webs can use its action to make a strength check against the spell save DC. Um, so basically, uh, long and short fire uh, actually deals damage to it. So you can burn it away at a five foot cube per. Uh, dealing 2d4 damage to any creatures that start its turn in the fire. Why not? What if I use the spell jump with him from where I'm at? What if I used the spell jump? Like, would I be able to do it in this terrain, or...? You could cast jump. That would give you a longer jump, but we'll say if you spend a spell slot on jump, Mm. All right, a little hard for me to hear. I know. Um, right? Let me turn. I'm gonna turn Eddie down real quick. Uh, do, you, do you guys want to take a quick break? Yeah, if you like. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I okay. also muted him in Discord. It made it much easier. I was just gonna. I figured I'd unmute him when he came back. Yeah, that's up to you guys. Uh, we may as well take a quick break. All right. So when we last left off, um, Aethelflit, you, instead of seeing lightning erupt from this blue drag, uh, draconian, you did see web. Uh, you are currently in a webbed environment. At the moment, there are no ill effects, but once you start your next turn, there will be. Although it sounds like you've already sussed out some plans for maybe getting through that. Um, that is the end of the blue turn. Uh, Tarlet. Yes. You are 50 feet away from the red draconian at the moment. And he is going to dash towards you. He okay. is not quite there, and I'll put his token on the map in just a moment. He's not quite there. He's close, but he's he's within striking range, but uh, can't quite utilize that. Um, okay. You... Perception check. Perception. High on one of the buildings very close by. In fact, let me point to it. Uh, it's actually on the roof of the building that you guys are directly next to. Okay. You look up and you see a shadowy figure. And with that 18, I would say you can see green wings flapping from the rooftop. Green wings flapping from the rooftop? Correct. I need to put these motherfuckers on the map. Uh, but I'll do that in just a moment. Uh, that is the end of the Red Draconian's turn. I need everyone to roll initiative. I will. I was like, how did I roll a 32 initiative? But I had number of dice on four, so that explains that. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm literally typing out their initiative in a Google <laughs> Google search bar. <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is the jankiest thing I've ever done as a DM. Uh, these are good rolls for you guys, though. That's absurd. Okay. So let me put their tokens out. It is going to be... You all rolled your initiative, right? Yes. Yes. Sorry. I think I did. Why do I do mm -hmm. Sorry. I switched to my phone, and when I did, uh, I muted you guys. Um, Y'all... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what were your roles? I need to clear out this initiative. Mm. Uh, I rolled a 17. 20. 17. 14 uh, from Kalik. 20. 20 from Kalik, so 7 from Tyla? Yes. Okay, let me get rid of this. That's fine. So, so there. there we go. Uh, Kalix, though, could I get you to roll a death saving throw for me? Yeah, there we go. Uh, 13. That's good. Okay, so that's one success. That's going to put it on Aethel Flit. So you're currently in webbed. Uh, it basically reduces your movement speed more than anything at the moment. Uh, it's a 20-foot cube. You could certainly enlarge yourself and try to break free. Yeah, I think she, again, is just feeling despondent, and she just wants to get out of there, and it's like, it just feels like every time they're, like, almost there, something fucking happens. And so she, yeah, hasn't used it yet, but she will... Do whatever I need to activate that enlarge, remember the dwarf, and just, again, just scream, I guess, and grow. And grow into whatever, however tall I get. Um, I think you're considered a large creature? That sounds right. Uh, but yes, you, you think of that giant dwarf from your vision before you fought, fought Gr Gregoris, and you can hear the embers. Uh, from his forge, you can hear him clinking just in the distance in the back of your mind. Uh, and you, you don't grow nearly as large as the, the uh, giant dwarf, which is an oxymoron, but you do grow much, much larger. In fact, there are a few people that have taken notice of this, and, and slowly you've drawn a lot of attention to yourselves. Um, but then you do enlarge, uh, and, and you think you see somebody faint in the distance. Uh, there's mm -hmm. somebody utterly shocked by what they see. Um, the the draconians are not like completely out in the open they're a little obscured right now uh i'd say the blue is uh, i really need to put these tokens out there uh, i'd say the blue is right in the doorway at the moment um and i would say let's see you moved 30 feet from colleagues so 15 feet so you're 15 feet from the door currently um so do with that what you will move more I'm just moving away Carrying his body. That is my only plan to get away, break line of sight, and try to heal him. Okay, so uh, I will need you to roll a strength saving throw. Okay. But you will have advantage. Strength, strength, strength. Boom. Whoa. You hear that clink in the back of your mind, and, and you lumber through. Uh, you are no longer suffering from your half movement by carrying cleats, though. Uh, so you're able to move a full 30 feet uh, from where you are currently, and we'll say that because you, A, I mean, you critted, but B, because mechanically that's how it works, uh, you are able to move all 30 of those feet without any disadvantages whatsoever. Nice. Yay. Oh, yes. GTFO, and I'm, that's everything. I'm just yeah. All right. Uh, 
Uh, so that's going to put it on. Let me consult my Google. Uh, nothing else for your turn? Is there anything else you want to do with your turn? Sorry, it's like the one time I can't get my mic to work. Uh, no, maybe just like cast my glance about to see if I catch like sight of Tarlin, but just no, just keep moving. Okay, people are certainly moving away. <clears throat> um, yeah. You should go away. Drawn attention from the large sizes, and I mean, there's also pilot uh, weapon. Tarlin, you currently yeah. have, and bear with me while I get his token, but you currently have the red. Uh, Draconian directly next to you. He wasn't able to act on his last turn. He used all of his action and movement to approach you. You do see a figure on the rooftop uh, that is currently not in front of you, but certainly um, seems to be threatening, and I would assume is capable of murderous intent. Okay. So I will continue this little chase and I will um uh let's see. I will uh, um disengage and bonus action dash again and move another sixty feet. Um You dash and disengage? Yes, yes, dash and disengage. Uh, and I'm going to move... Uh, yeah, just... So I guess here, and then... Uh, yeah, I guess I want to go around the building to uh, to, to meet back up with Ethel Flood and Tarlin, so I guess uh, I would go 40. Uh, I, I guess can't I can't exactly consider this map to scale. Yeah. Um, but why not? I, I mean, I definitely want to run around the building and try and get around to the front as fast as I can. Uh, we'll, we'll say you've got the power of the guys bot in you. We'll say this map is to scale. So if you wanted to join up with your friends, you certainly could. Oh no! My man's! He is... unconscious. I'm fucked up, um, dude. <laughs> uh, I can't... I have used all of my actions, so I can't do anything about it this turn. Um... I was running from a guy, so uh, I kind of y'all see me basically looking over my shoulder as I sprint up to you guys. The fastest I've ever run, like you've ever seen, <laughs> like in these robes and stuff. Uh, <laughs> the, the the fiery one is behind me. We we need to leave, and I'm I'm anxious to heal Harlan, but um, right now it's not safe to do so. So, yeah, I, I don't have the actions to do that, but, uh... Yeah. As soon as I do, I will. Fair um, enough. Fair enough. But, yeah, I, I made it, wanted to make sure I was at least close to you both. Um... Y'all survive yeah, first. I can... Uh, I'll be alright. Uh, I'm That chilling. is going to end my turn. Uh, alright. Uh, to put it on and I am working on making my undead spirit NPC for uh, for uh, my spell uh, <laughs> I should have the, the thing ready in just a moment okay word all right so that's gonna put it on this figure up here. This creature, and now Aethelflaed, you, you can see him as he walks across the roof. 
uh, he is you. And he hops down just outside of the web. Uh, he is going to move. Up. Oh, damn it. It's a bad roll. It's not a very graceful fault. Um, he is flapping his wings, but he kind of he kind of falls flat. And when he kind of he's like uh, uh, flip flop and just flops on the ground. Uh, shit. It does strike you as odd because he has wings. He he can he should be able to just kind of move through. Um, and as you look, you can see that like it didn't hurt him much, but you can tell his pride is wounded. <laughs> Uh, it was not graceful at all. Um, but there he is. He's on the <laughs> ground. Um, I will show you what he looks like. That is what you're looking at there with him. <laughs> Everyone able to see him? Oh my god, dude. Yeah. Green boy. So there's some intimidating looking fuckers. All right. <sighs> So he is now on the ground with you. Um, he is going to... Uh, he's just far enough. He has a bow that he pulls out. Um, Aethelflood. You see him aim. Yep. Yeah, Bakker. Oh shit, I'm just rolling. I'm just rolling. <laughs> rolling and roll, it's fine. Um, just rolling. Um, there it is. Ooh, he crit fails. Uh, so he strings his bow, he flings it at you. He is unable to uh, land his arrow, but he does grab another one and very quickly fires that one off as well. That's a six. So just both of them kind of whiz past you. Uh, he has not shown any true inapti- or true uh, aptitude. <laughs> at any point, he kind of fell funny, even though he has wings, and he just fired off two arrows. They didn't hit you at all. Um, so that's the situation for the arrows. That is going to put it on. Uh, let's see. The blue. It's going to put it on the blue. Uh, he is standing in the doorway. And he's going to cast... Bear with me. What is he going to get past? Just got real quiet, right? Yeah, sorry. I'm to... <laughs> okay, just making sure. I'm trying to pick a spell that makes sense. Sorry. Don't do that. We don't want that. Uh, <laughs> don't cast yeah. any spells. Spells are Something... bad for us. Something <laughs> real. You should cast Cure Mass Healing Word on us. There we go. <laughs> That's That sounds good. That sounds good to me. <laughs> Harlan, he's going to look at you and cast uh, Bane. Then he's going to look at um, Aethelflaed. He's going to pass Calixto. 
because Kalisto doesn't make any sense to target him. Um, so the two of you are currently baned. Um, so are you're not baned, but you have to make uh, charisma saving throws and casting bane. So if I can get two charisma saves. Uh -huh. Ooh, I got baby. You did. Yes, you did. Uh, Aethelflaed, there is no ill effect. Uh, but Tarlin, you are currently under the influence of magical disparity. Uh, and that is going to be the end of his turn. That's going to put it on the red. And the red, who is still precisely 60 feet behind you, he dashes, and he's currently in front of you, Tarlin. Uh, roll initiative. Okay. I'm, I don't want to do group initiative, but there's a lot of rolling. <laughs> that is a fair. That's a fair. That's a feeling. Mm -hmm. I, I feel that one in my bones. I could roll initiative six times, or I could just roll it once. <laughs> Right, or like groups or something. I like group like initiative. initiative. This doesn't this make doesn't any make sense. Once they get to a certain power level, it's like, it's just very damning if they all go at once. Mm -hmm, right. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. It, it, okay. it works for like, like, boards, board encounters, that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, like these ones where they all have individual abilities, I totally get it. It's, it's, it's weird. Yeah, they're strong. Uh, three for red, 14 for green, 20 for blue, and silver's 11. Uh, naturally, blue is the one that I was struggling with because he's a caster. But they couldn't we... It... Let me see. If you wanted to throw them in the initiative tracker, I think you could just create entries and throw them in there. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a really good idea. You create the entry, you can just edit it every time. After you roll it and all on hand. I was I was gonna try and do it for you honestly, but I was like, oh I'm not DM. Yeah, I think if you just right-click them, <clears throat> it'll allow you to create an entry in the initiative tracker. Oh, yeah. that... Okay. He's going to cast... Bane... again? I mean, it kind of makes sense. Yeah, he's going to cast Bane again. Uh, Aethel Flood, he's going to cast Bane on you. Uh, so, Charisma saving throw. Uh, 13 does not quite do it. Uh, so, you are also Bane as well. Uh, the Draconian just kind of hisses. Um, you get the impression that he's kind of expended most of his real threatening uh, magic. So you kind of get the sense that he would be doing more if he could. Uh, two nukes and then red and two bangs. So you're you're definitely getting the impression that he's kind of spent uh, and he might be leaning on his comrades a little more. Um, Okay, so that's the blue. That's going to be on Kalixto. Kalixto, if I can get a death saving through. 
Yes, sir. Let's see what we got. Trying to right click. Hey, okay. That's two nice. successes. Nice. That's two successes. Okay. So then. Uh, it's going to be on you, Tarlin. Okay. All right. So. <clears throat> Hearing those rattling bones, that uh, those phantom rattling bone sounds that he's been hearing, he uh, decides to go ahead and reach out to those, and he uh, Tarlin is going to cast Summon Undead. Nice. And I basically manifest an undead spirit. Uh, and it's, uh, um, uh, I have, uh, and I have the stat block already out. I have a token I can throw out there, too. Uh, but... I want to know what this looks like. I, I haven't pulled one. I am actually going to make it, I have three options when I summon it. I can do ghostly, putrid, or skeletal. And in this case, I think I am going to do skeletal. And so this, uh, uh, basically, it looks like these bones kind of, like, start to piece together out of nothing until it forms this skeleton out of, like, just magic. And... It raises up a, uh, uh, it, it's a little bit, it's a bit behind, and it raises up its, uh, 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 uh hands, and a bolt of necrotic energy hits the red dragon in the back. Nice. Uh, uh that's a hit. That's, yeah, that's 12. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite hit but it is deeply yeah. unsettled yeah uh <laughs> so yeah tarlin calls this spirit and it's and it's this yeah the skeleton is back there just i guess it's jaw clattering uh as it like as it shoots that bolt of uh necrotic energy out um he's got the heebie-jeebies <laughs> um and he kind of he looks he, he looks at the at these draconians and the sun, and, and and very calmly the dead rise to face you and your queen Ooh. okay anything else you would like to do get him um would you let me bonus action cure wounds uh Tarlin, so we don't have to make a death save yes yeah, I mean, that's a level one spell if you're not upcasting it. So, yeah, absolutely. And then once you roll your first round. Oh, this uh, yeah. Let's see. Let's go ahead and hit that. Uh, why does it not just roll the dang dice? Ugh. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just roll the two dice. Roll 2d8. Plus three. I'll do that ahead of time. Nice. Nice. That's 16 on Harlan. 16 damage. Fuck yeah. 16 healing? Yeah, oh, 16 sorry. healing. 16 <laughs> Kalisto. I just wail on Harlan while he, uh, on Kalisto while he's unconscious. <laughs> yeah, I just kick him while he's down. Stay down. It's not as Wait bad as saying roll initiative. It's not as bad as saying roll initiative instead of roll insight. <laughs> oh, I mean, it's the, I'm attacking my unconscious uh, uh, teammate to add an extra death, a failed death save. <laughs> That's pretty rough. Pretty fun. <laughs> Yikes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm back in it now. Yeah, yeah, buddy. I got you. Back in it. Okay. Uh, yeah, we've got, there's this skeleton clattering its jaw like uh, back behind uh, the, the draconians like about 10-15 feet 
Am I being, like, held by Aethel Flood right now? I mean, once you yeah. wake up, I guess I let you go, but... <laughs> you just awaken... <laughs> you awaken in Aethel Flood's giant arms, and, and I guess Tarlin is touching you. <laughs> so what is going I'm on? Like, I'm on, like, tippy toes reaching up to touch Tarlin. <laughs> I'm trying to touch Kalisto. <laughs> Kalisto awakens, disoriented, and confused. Okay. You remember your name? How does Kalisto react to uh, seeing a skeleton just out over there? Ah, uh, I mean, there's a lot. This is a lot to wake up to. I'm being held by a giant April flood, fair. which that I've never seen fair. that before. And I nearly died. There's an undead. We're surrounded. Oh, you're awake. I should probably put you down now, and she will put you down. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. I, uh. I fucking assess the situation. Do you remember my name? Calixto, Aethel Flood? Okay, good enough, let's go. All right, all right. Okay, anything else, Tarlin? Uh, but, 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 no, that is gonna do it. Uh, oh, I need to... Okay. Uh, yeah, no, that's good. Okay, uh, that's good. That's gonna put it on the green. Uh, so we can have a moment of dialogue. Um, we are still technically in combat. But we can have a quick RP moment with these creatures. <laughs> okay. Death, you say. Yes, throw death at us. See what happens, says the green. We are dead. I don't know anything to say to that. <laughs> you, um, Tarlin, uh, you said these things. Tarlin. Go ahead, Tarlin. Oh no, he if he says once he says we are death, Tarlin has a flash of what of his vision of the fields of undead and. All, and the, the basically just massive armies of the undead and all of that. And he can't help it. This is maybe the first time y'all have heard him laugh. And he laughs in this way that's like, he, it's mirthless and like almost insane. And it, it he's just, as, as he does that, he just kind of looks at you you have no idea the scale that is coming. I think Echo Flood is just very, like, what the fuck is going on? Oh my god. You, I... you, the nut, the nut. The numbnik, I'm glad you are back with us. I haven't gotten to introduce myself. Please, let me hear you beg for your life. The only good dragon's a dead dragon. Send me back, I won't have you toying with us. What do you even want with us, hmm? You, you said these things looked unkillable, right? Correct. And he claims to be of death. Yeah, these guys are fucking with us. Hmm. So, so, I'm sorry, run, run by me one more time what he said to me. Uh, he wants to hear you beg for your life, and that's why he's happy that you are once again cognizant. Hmm. Yeah, so uh, I'll just say I'll never kneel to the likes of you. You'll have to send me back to the brink of death. 
Yeah, and no one here is letting that happen, so fuck off. You see him crack a smile. The the silver and the blue, they also laugh. You don't get any emotion from the red draconian. Uh, you do see a, a sort of green gas billow from beneath the, the grin. And then in a 15-foot cone, he's going after Calixto and Aethelflaed. Need both of you to roll constitution saving throws. Come on. Oh, I even have plus seven. That sucks. Oh, shit. Wrong. Wrong. Uh, sorry about that. 13. This is a DC 14. Oof. Um, and as this erupts, you've been defiant. Oh, wait. You're in this moment of confusion. And Do I get advantage from someone's giant, or was that just strength? Just strength. Okay. Never mind. Sorry. Uh, no, it's okay. Uh, yeah, so he billows the smoke, this noxious gas as you taunted him. You both take 18 damage. Yeah. I'm back down again. <laughs> I'm not doing very good. I have 11. Please. He looks over at Tarlin. Bring him back so he can beg. And that will be the end of his turn. Uh, April Flood, you're next. Well, this is not going well, and I feel like at this point we're probably just gonna die. So she's just mad that this guy's an asshole. So she's like, nobody's gonna beg for the likes of you, and throw a spear at him, I guess. Oh, shit. And then... Throw another spear at him. We can't. We can't kill him. We should probably get the hell out of here. Yeah. But I do have one more spell slot, so I will bonus action cure wounds. Uh... <laughs> oh shit! So if that uh, we'll get him up because that's my last spell. So. Oh shit. Oops. Yeah, I have a few of my like artificer spells, but not any. Like, they're from the from the level spells, the level spells, and like the class spells, not the actual spells that I have. But anyway, yeah. So that's it. That's all I can do. And I know they won't die, but she's mad. So. Oh, shit. Okay. What what level heal was that? Uh, it's uh plus my is it my intelligence my intelligence mod is plus four. So I think it's a D eight. Plus four. Oh, okay. Maybe you're laying, or is it? Oh, I'm sorry. So sorry. All good. Oh, that see your hands. Yeah, we gotta get the hell out of here. We do. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, so you were able to. Oh, should I roll it? Sorry, I thought. Oh, um, sorry. Yeah, I didn't realize you wanted me to roll it. No, you have no reason to, right? You're unconscious. I am the one that's doing this. 16. Wow, holy shit. Thank you. So you're back up. That's... I don't know if my shit will hit him, but... Bleak though. As you come to, uh, April Flip, you are able to hit um, with that 20. Go ahead and roll that. Okay. Perfect. So that's 10 damage. Great. Okay. That's it. So you're, you're swinging. And you feel the benefit of the satisfaction of dealing damage. Uh, that was at the green, correct? Whoever was speaking. Yeah, and saying, like, 
I want to see you beg. That is when... Calixto, you are waking up. Let me find something to You no longer see the town, the building, these four creatures in front of you. Um, Tarlin, you're also now almost in a different space, it feels like. Um, before you is this creature, this being that's covered in ornate jewels and surrounded by this, this brilliant foliage that looks almost unnatural, almost un inhuman. Um, Go ahead and everyone roll me either religion. Actually, yeah, religion or history. Hmm. <laughs> that makes no idea. Part of you recall from the book that you found on Gregorus. There were a good handful of parables and some of the history of Karen. But one thing that was very noticeable was the description of Timosh, the god of undeath. And you even seem to recall some tidbits about his love of jewelry, uh, his fanciful uh, ordained nature, despite the fact that he is a god of such um, desolation and uh, gore. Ah. I think maybe it's time we should have some negotiations. What do you say? This is the guy that hates life, right? He hates life. But technically, a flim don't necessarily recognize him. Only Tarlin would have that information at the moment, but he's definitely of the same nature as the creatures that you've encountered previously, like your Minotaur, um, Tarlin, um, your voice that asked you your questions, and uh, for you, Aethelflaed, also uh, the, the giant dwarf. Um, there's something elegant and haunting in front of you. In front of you. Who are you? I am Chimosh. Chimosh. I'm sure you haven't heard of me, though. Most people haven't. Everyone's forgotten about us, you see. But we haven't forgotten about you. Um, Arlen is kind of... He, his finger is tracing part of the circle of, of Solonari that he has or that he has around his neck and he kind of looks at, at you and he says I know you of you and Just... I he kind of sighs for a minute and says I seem to have tapped into your power I let you tap into my power so that you may get just the sweetest taste of that which you desire, you love. The boundaries between life and death. I want to help you facilitate. I want to strike a bargain. Wait, so where are we? Is this your world, your realm? Are we dead? Did those mm. dragons kill us? You are really not dead yet. Those children are my offering to Queen Tachesis. 
I gave them to her as a present, the abomination. They will bring much death into the world, and, well, we don't need the living to be roaming around too frequently, so I occasionally feel maybe I should tip the scales, and in doing so, I can perhaps earn some brownie points from what I presume will be our new leader. And what do you want from us? I want what you want. I want you to kill Ignea. And you would help us do this? Well, I don't... I don't like to do things for free. If I help you, I feel like maybe you could roam free and, you know, not kill a dragon. If I don't help you, I suppose you would fail miserably and die by the hands of many, many soldiers. But I'm willing to perhaps strike some sort of deal that works in my favor helps you, but I I know that there's a smell of desperation about you that you will not see wafting from me. Maybe I could help you some. Maybe I could help you a lot. Maybe I could go to some others. Becklin or Cudgel. Maybe they would be able to pull this off. I, I don't know. You just seem capable. I could perhaps fuel that capacity. Pause one second. Doesn't Igneo work for the queen, though? Like, so is he just trying to give her yeah. a competition or something? Sounds like it. Huh. Okay. Well, you show. What makes you so sure you're going to get the Queen's favor? Those draconians. Did you not think it was odd that they don't die like the others? They're special. I gave them a gift. And in doing so, Tachesis will remember me. But I have my own ambitions. And you're not going to share those with us, I suppose. You don't want her to win. We could see things in a more amicable future. If I don't draw her wrath, but I invoke her favor. I think they call it playing both sides, hedging your bets. I see opportunity for you in a desperate situation, and I could make use of you. And what would you ask of us? Well, you will need strength. You will need to You will need to fortify this. All of these things I can help you with. At this, Ethel Flood's little answer probably like puffs up and she's like, I think I could fault to find the city with help. Your, without your help, you don't have to be more than that, I hope. You're running out of time. I think Ethel Flood's gonna look at the guys and like try to speak with their eyes and be like, should we, shouldn't we? Calixto is intrigued. Ethel Flood, I think, has already said yes in her head, but... I sort of cock an eyebrow at Tarlin. Um... Tarlin, uh, so Tarlin's kind, is kind of looking around. He, um... You said the... So these are kind of flowers around them. Um... Do I know what kind of flowers these are? Like, are they 
Roll nature. Uh, okay. Or Arcana. I'll let you also roll Arcana. Okay. This is like the universe. Oh my god. What the the one in four hundred for that? Now roll initiative. Um <laughs> So um, you you are studying flat. you're studying the foliage, but it, it is of something that it, you, I mean it doesn't take a good roll um, to know that this is something of a very ethereal kind of magical property. Um, you don't know what it yeah. does. So you don't know if it influences you or anyone else. You don't know if it's poisonous. Uh, you're not sure what currently the properties of these flowers are. I, out of character, know that he's got a couple of flowers associated with him, so I was more wondering what if they were those, but I don't... My character doesn't know that, so... Uh, <laughs> Tarlin we, is just like, mm, flowers. <clears throat> yes. We do have a book about him. <laughs> you found it last session. The ca the Chemosh book? Uh-huh. Yeah, I, and I have been studying it, by studying the books. I think that's where oh. I got this uh, spell mm -hmm. from. Well, boys, how about this? Only one of us needs to make a deal. Not necessarily all of us. What are you offering? Um, I... Sorry, go on, April Flood. I thought you were No, no, that. yeah. She was just going to volunteer if no one did. Because I'm curious. I am also curious. Yeah, I want to know what what Kamash is offering. Because, like, right now we're getting our asses kicked, so I feel like realistically it's like this seems like the best decision in the time because it's like if this will yep. help us win like let's do it then yep yep because we're getting our butts kicked facing defeat mm -hmm. what yeah. are you offering i know you will need an army but do not i no way or two to repurpose the fallen. Hmm. Angel play looks at knows exactly what he's talking about. He's talking. I. It's basically the other spell, the the animate dead, and all that that I've been that I am looking for that I will be getting later. And he's kind of Harlan. Kind of closes his eyes for a bit and. I will do it. But perhaps an army would not be enough. Maybe you would need more? We need to survive. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. We need a way to destroy them, too. Well, I could offer you survival in its fullest form, but I would need more than the head of Ignea. Much, much more. What would you ask? I tell you this. I could make you much like my children. I have given them a great blessing, and they do listen to me, even though they might not understand it. They will do as I bid. I could ensure your survival if you were to agree to my terms of killing Ignea, but it seems as though that's too aligned with both of our ambitions. No, I will need more. I could make you... Well, unkillable. You have seen the benefit of immortality, have you not? We have. Yeah. Yes, you have. Very well. Would you no. like to live forever? <laughs> Come again? Would you like to live forever? And the terms are, we become your puppet? 
it. This is an amicable agreement that we would be reaching on mutual terms. Pop, no. But there will be a price. I don't know how I feel about being under the control of another bot. This is quite tempting. I accept. You don't know the price. <laughs> For my, to achieve my purposes, I will seize any manner of heretical strength. I have but one goal, and any other price can be paid. I require for three gifts, three lives. Any life? Well, no, I don't believe that would be fair. Ignia count as one of those lives? I guess technically four lives. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we gotta be very concise here. When this is, there's some monkey pox. Okay. Going on. This is in <laughs> yeah. Like. I thought, I, I, that was completely out of character. No, uh... <laughs> what say the two of you? You can lead my armies forever. You could change and shape the world. You'll be written about in the annals of history. This dude trying to make another Ketherick Thorm on this, like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> it also sounds lonely and long. Uh, like, one day we're just gonna go mad, and then we won't be able to die. Yeah, I'm not interested in leading your armies. Well, once our bargain is done, you can do as you wish with your immortality. Let's say this. Are you saying that we can use your power whenever we need, but you can also use ours? Or is this more of a slave thing? He asked, he asked for specific deaths. But well we didn't say what death, though. Yeah. I, I think I need more criteria for who you want us to kill if you want us to do these things. Very well. You say three lies, but you say nothing more. So I can go kill a rabbit and that's fine. <laughs> Darling, you and I, we have a connection, a bond. I could give you all the power you've ever dreamed of. You know you want that. I've given you breadcrumbs. Taste. You think that highly of yourself, do you? Uh, 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 Tarlin, at that, he just kind of frowns a little bit and says, You don't understand the power that I seek. I seek to alleviate suffering, not to conquer and command. I he kind of look he he looks he thinks about that that skeleton that he summoned. He's like, I've always been closer to the dead than the living, only due to the nature of my studies. The He kind of like stops for a moment. It's like, it is the soul part of the body, or is the body part of the soul? Is which comes first? And he kind of uh, look. He, he kind of looks at Kemosh for uh, at that at, at that question. He kind of 
Uh, I think it's what it was chicken, egg, what have you. Darling, I, I respect you. I really do. It must be so daunting to know that the lifespan of a human is so short and that you can only study for so much. The elves, they, they, will, they will throw it in your face. They live for so long, but you, well, you could die tomorrow, no, nothing. I, I could live a long time. And, uh, you know, t uh, when he says, I could die tomorrow, Arlen just kind of smiles a little bit and says, then I would have helped all that I could. And that will be that. 